Welcome to Unit 7. This unit focuses on identifying people and objects. Suppose you're in a room or area with many people and you want to identify someone. Start with something general and obvious. Are they standing or sitting? Is their body position notable? After you identify the person's body position or location, look for other identifying features that stand out. Their height, their weight, hair color, hair style, or perhaps they're wearing a unique accessory like a hat or glasses. In ASL, we describe height using a bent B hand shape and eye gaze. You are implicitly indicating someone's relative height that is, their height in relation to you. Your eye gaze shows how tall or short they are in comparison with you. The height sign is fairly literal, so be mindful of how you produce it. Another important aspect of description is body size. Signs for size rely heavily on non-manual markers, so be sure to include them in your sign production. A cha mouth indicates big or strong. The oo lips indicate thin. Mm lips mean average. And the puff cheek means fat or fluffy. We use classifiers to indicate the position or movement of someone's legs. These are called body position or body part classifiers. Use your index finger as a stand-in for legs. Show legs crossed, crossed at the knees, knees splayed apart, or one leg bent and resting on the other. For upper body positioning, use your own arms, hands, and torso to mimic the person you are describing. For example, is their chin resting on their fist? their arms crossed, or maybe they're waving to someone. We use descriptive classifiers, or DCLs, to indicate facial hair. For example, a mustache, even the type of mustache, a beard, the extent or thickness of a beard, or a goatee, a mustache and beard that connect. We also use DCLs to describe the frame type of eyeglasses. Use a bent L hand shape around your eye socket to indicate the shape and size of the frames. Use your pinky finger to trace thin or wire frames. Use a G hand shape to indicate thick frames. Be sure to include other details of the glasses as well colors, lens type, amount of wear and tear. Use DCLs to show hair type and style. Most long or straight hairstyles are produced with a B or bent B hand shape. Curly hair is indicated with a claw five, while wavy hair is often shown with a five hand shape. Buzz cuts or very short hair is signed with a G hand shape. Braids are shown with R hand shapes. And as with other classifiers, don't forget your non-manual markers. Please watch this entire video on signing hair types. It is from Chris at ASL That, and his list is extensive. Make sure to watch the whole thing. Clothing is another important class of signs that relies on DCLs. For shirt necklines, use a pinky finger or index finger to trace the shape. Indicate whether the shirt has a turtleneck, pointed collars, and any kind of closures like zippers, buttons, or snaps. Most of the signs used for describing clothing are DCLs. That is, they show how something looks. 
but some of the signs are ICLs, or instrument classifiers. These are signs that show how something works. For example, a button is a DCL, but a zipper or a snap is an ICL because they show how these closures work. Another sign that is an ICL is the sign for hood. We mimic the action of pulling up a hood. Patterns on clothing are similarly expressed through DCLs. Here are some common examples. Vertical stripes. Horizontal stripes. Plaid. Polka dots. Ruffles. Fur around a hood or on the cuffs. Floral pattern. Zigzag lines or wavy lines. A worn out elbow. Or a shirt with a logo or the name of a company printed on the front. These are just some of the patterns you can describe for clothing. Make sure to watch homework videos from 7.1 and 7.2 in your Signing Naturally curriculum.